ladies and gents. I am working on a new thing here for the Monarch Lathe. Uh, before we even get started, I'm gonna say, I realize some of you are gonna think this is totally unnecessary and a complete waste of my time. I get that. And I would agree with you if I was in here trying to make every dollar I could out of this machine and my other machines, but that's not what I'm doing. This is a home shop where I get to play around and you know do what makes uh, makes life fun for me. So what we're going to work on is getting that chip pan cleaned out and painted. It's I, I don't know why they didn't paint it. It, it really does look like it's just kind of rust and uh, filth. I don't think there's any you know lack uh, old paint on there of some other color. Um, which is weird because they did a really good job cosmetically on the lathe and then they just kind of left it like that. So first things first, let me pull that sucker out and we will um, get the little chip bins over here filled up, clean this, uh, clean out what's in here. The sucker is heavy. Actually, I think I decided every time I say gross or yuck, I'm going to bleep it out because that seems to bother people. Actually, just this morning, somebody was watching one of my older videos where apparently I said too much. And uh, I do remember people making that comment at the time saying, dude, why do you say so much? I have no idea. It's just one of those things comes out of my mouth a lot for whatever reason. It's got an old pig mat in there that is a little bit used up. Try not to stick my fat behind in front of the camera too much, but we've got most of the chips out. So now we're gonna move on to trying to clean up and remove some of the oil and uh, the remaining chips in there. I'm not exactly sure what the best way to do this is. I'm sure somebody out there would have something, some good advice to tell me and uh, offer to share that information with me. But uh, while we're doing this, it's kind of a monotonous job. I'm gonna try to not to show too much of it because it is gonna be boring video, but I did wanna talk about a couple of things. So uh, who I am and who I'm not. I got a hilarious comment earlier today, as a matter of fact, that said, you're certainly no A-bomb. And First of all, yeah, of course, there's only one A-bomb. I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. I'm a guy in my garage that is showing what I'm doing. And that's really the long and the short of it. I think I have some insights that might be valuable or entertaining or whatever for some people. But if you don't find it entertaining and you think I'm doing it wrong and I'm an idiot, well, that's okay too. But just don't, don't tell me I'm portraying myself as something when I'm not doing that. I guess that's the thing that bugs me the most. So there was somebody who was all up in arms about how I was such a know-it-all about the gear rack for the tailstock thing. And I just, uh, I just honestly don't see where that's coming from because I certainly don't have that attitude and I try not to present it. So if you think I'm coming across as arrogant or that I know a lot of stuff and I really don't, my apologies. 
because that's not what I'm trying to do. I don't think I know a lot. I recognize that I do have some strengths, but I've got a ton of weaknesses because I haven't been doing this very long. Pretty nervous about this because when I moved this, and I knew this at the time I bought the lathe moving it around, there's something liquid down here and I don't know what it is. Hopefully it's not water. I would imagine it stinks pretty bad. But we do need to deal with it at some point. So before I wash up and call it, call it a night, I figure let's crack this sucker open and see what we see. Uh, maybe we can start figuring out why this is closed off. And they use some little, little screws here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite nervous. Uh, it looks like there might be some sealant of some kind around this disc as well. So normally, as far as I understand it, this would be a perforated screen of some kind to allow coolant back down into the sump and keep chips up here. Uh, okay, oh, that's not great. That is not great. Oh boy. Oh, that smells like a really, really moldy towel. Wow. Oof, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, that's definitely on the side. Oof. Uh, it's actually not like a rancid smell. It's just a, it's a mold smell. It smells really, really, really potent. Oof. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture of that for Instagram and then uh, we'll close, close that lid back on there and go inside. Oh boy. It's Saturday morning and back to making something of this mess. I think what we'll do is use my little transfer pump to uh, just to get some of the crap out of there. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. I'm not too concerned for detriment to my health things, but for my enjoyment of being out here, I am going to put on my respirator mask, which is obviously going to prevent talking while I'm doing anything, but uh, this stuff or this thing uh, prevents smells getting through as well. So it shouldn't be quite as unpleasant doing this. And then of course, um, keeping the gloves on to keep my hands sort of clean and glasses to protect my eyeballs. Well, the underside of this is not as bad as I thought it'd be. Well, with the uh, lid removed, whatever you want to call it, we can see just how nasty this is. Um, <clears throat> boy, that smell is something. Uh, yeah, this could, could have been avoided. So it looks like they just, you know, 
decommissioned the coolant system and put a bunch of sealant on there and just said, oh, I don't have to think about it anymore, rather than doing what I'm having to do and just get all the, uh, the old coolant and oil out of there and leave it dry. That certainly would have been my preference for them to have taken some time because I guarantee it wasn't this nasty when they made their choice. God, this is irritating. So I think what I'm gonna do is, now that it's lightened up a whole bunch, this is almost 30 gallons removed out of there. So put the machinery skates under it and then at least I can move it around and give one last go of pumping by basically jacking up this end, or, you know, either end, whatever, so we can get all the liquid into one corner, essentially, and then pump the rest of that out, and then we'll get to scraping and wiping and dealing with the living things in here. But wow, this is, yeah, it's pretty gross. Now that, my friends, is what they call a honey bucket. And yes, it actually smells worse than it looks. But we've made progress, at least. Got the sump pan fairly cleaned up. Certainly not close to done yet, but it is better than it was. And there's a lot less a lot less sludge and a lot less juice in there compared to uh, just a few minutes ago. Let's crack open this panel and see what the coolant pump looks like. For some reason these screws are one missing and the others are loose. So, not sure what to expect. Maybe there is no pump in here at all. Okay, there we go. There is a pump and a lot of mouse poop. So that's not ideal. So obviously we have the, the pump line for pickup. I don't know what that plug is for. And then of course the output of the pump comes up here and then goes up a flexible tube right above where you can see on the camera, up to uh, an arm that would dispense coolant. Now that arm is completely gone. They, somewhere down the line, somebody replaced it with the lamp. So I don't know what it originally would have looked like, but I'm sure that's something we can find online or even in the manual that I've got. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly what to, uh, what to do about getting this thing cleaned up. I don't know, is that plug there meant for a clean out? So you pop that off of there and remove the pump and then you can wash down that segment. I don't know. The good news is we do have a coolant pump. It doesn't look too terrible. I would imagine it needs uh, rebuilds at least with gaskets and stuff like that and maybe some motor work, but that's certainly not as bad as it could be as far as rust and parts missing and whatnot. It looks like the wiring was just disconnected and then the tubing that goes up to the carriage removed and they left it. All right, keep cleaning the other side and then we'll figure this out at some point. Well, I had no intention of making this a two-part video, but I think I'm going to simply because I wanna ask for some help from anybody who has a suggestion or um, knows for sure what the idea is here. So I've got the crud all cleaned out of there. I'm gonna still run a wire brush or wire wheel rather 
on the um, uh, bare metal surfaces here to get them cleaner in preparation for primer and paint. But the, the last problem I've got as far as cleaning goes is here in the back. So the opening for the, for the uh, pump, the pump is right back here. So that wall is about right here. And there's, you know, sump area behind there, behind there, and then just a, a half an opening there. So I don't know how you're supposed to clean this other than to cut holes here and here. Um, it's bound to be just as disgusting as everywhere else. So I don't know what else to do. If you have any suggestions for me, I'd love to hear them. I'm sure with enough circulation, you know, fill this thing up with some kind of a, a solvent or a um, degreaser kind of thing and run the pump just over and over and over again. I think eventually you'd get it, but that would take a hundred years and I don't even know if that pump works. So anyway, please give me some suggestions. Otherwise I'll call it here and then we'll uh, come back to this uh, hopefully tomorrow when um, I've got some feedback from you all and the back recovers and uh, so do the nostrils. That stuff is just so smelly. Thanks for watching and please like, comment and subscribe.